Senator John Thune who joins us. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Ed. What are your thoughts? My understanding is that, as Leader McCarthy suggested, he had been working with Democrats for about a year on trying to build this task force. Then right before the pandemic really flared up, the Democrats pulled out. And now he says, look, we're pushing forward without them. This is a big issue. It is a big issue, and I think that the Republicans in the House are certainly right to try and press the leadership over there to put together a task force to examine, uh, obviously, what happened, what led up to this, and what uh, steps we ought to take in response to it. Uh, I think it's unfortunate the Democrats uh, are, don't want to participate, uh, regrettably, over there right now. Everything tends to be highly political, and uh, the Democrat leadership in the House is always looking for opportunities to poke uh, the president in the eye, and uh, I su suspect that they uh, see working with Republicans on this is something that undermines that objective. And certainly the public wants to see some action here. And your colleague in the Senate, Rick Scott from uh, Florida, had this to say about Corona accountability. We have failed to call out China for who they are, call out these international organizations for who they are. And you see Democrats out there trying to defend the World Health Organization. It's the craziest thing in the world. This is a group that said there was no local transmission when they knew there was. So we keep hearing this, let's call China out. So maybe now they finally are being called out. But what comes next, sir, so you can try and hold them accountable? I think that we have a lot of um, ways, a lot of levers that we can pull at. Uh, one, obviously, is uh, funding and funding for the World Health Organization, which is something that, as you pointed out, Senator Scott uh, is raising. And I think accountability there. But I think further more than that, accountability from China. Obviously, they lied. They, they understated, underreported what was going on there. There's no transparency in that country. This is a communist country. We need to remember that uh, when dealing with them. And I think one of the things the world could do, the international community could do, is ban Huawei equipment from their 5G networks. I mean, we've got countries in, the, in Europe like the UK and the Germans who are entertaining the idea of having that equipment uh, embedded in their uh, networks. And I think that gives the Chinese an opportunity to surveil and spy on people around the world. We should stop at, at a minimum. We ought to do that. But there are other ways, I think, that the world community can step up. And it's going to take the leadership of the United States to do that. And I know the president and the leadership up here in Congress uh, is, uh, is prepared to do that, at least on the mm -hmm. Republican side. Hopefully the Democrats will join in. Now, the president has also held out the possibility of more tariffs against China. Uh, the markets haven't necessarily liked that in recent days, though they're up uh, strongly today. I know maybe some of the farmers in your state of South Dakota might not like it as well, some of the trade battles we've seen. But on the positive side, it broke this morning a report that maybe U.S. and Chinese negotiators may be meeting next week uh, to hammer out more phases of, of these trade negotiations. H how do you balance all that out on one hand, as we're talking about here, trying to hold China accountable, the president talking about maybe more tariffs, when at the same time you're trying to negotiate with them? Yeah, and I don't think those are mutually exclusive, Ed. I think that you can uh, take a strong stance with respect to what happened with the coronavirus. I mean, clearly they were responsible for the rapid spread of this. It started there, it originated there, uh, they covered it up, and now it's a global pandemic. And, and I think they, had, they need to be account held accountable by the international community for that, led by the United States. But when it comes to trade, they're a big economic market, and obviously they need the United States. And I think we all recognize that. The farmers and ranchers in South Dakota do as well. Uh, I think you can operate on independent tracks there, realizing that there are relationships, trading relationships, economic mm -hmm. relationships that are important, but uh, that we cannot uh, turn a blind eye and abide uh, the continual lying yeah. uh, that they do on issues like this. Uh, what about the broader issue connected to trade and our relationship with China, which is obviously our economy and getting it back on its feet? We've saw this morning uh, more than three million more, Amer you know, three million more Americans filing for unemployment claims. Um, the leader, you're part of the Republican leadership, obviously, but Leader McConnell uh, has said that maybe there should be a pause here before there's a fourth stimulus bill. See how the first three, three and a half are working out. What's the latest thinking on that inside the Republican leadership? Well, I think first off, Ed, that it is all borrowed money, everything we've done so far to the tune of about $2.8 trillion. And in it, we're seeing what the effect is out there. The PPP program has been very successful. It's keeping people employed. It's keeping businesses uh, operating. And hopefully we'll get the worst of us this behind us. But there is no amount of money that we can spend in Washington that will substitute for a growing, growing, vibrant, dynamic economy. The key is to try and deal with the health emergency and then get this economy opened up again. When that happens, then you'll see those numbers start to go down. I think we're at the worst part with respect to unemployment and people filing claims right mm -hmm. now uh, because that, obviously the last uh, 
April was the worst month. But um, we're going to start seeing, I think, some, uh, some green shoots, some light at the end of the tunnel, and hopefully uh, we'll be off to a, a, a better time. But it's going gonna, it's gonna, to, you know, it took Washington to intervene, to provide some stability, to keep the market from tanking. Uh, I think everybody now wants to see what's working, what's not working, make sure that any dollars that we spend going forward uh, have an eye on maximizing, optimizing yeah. the impact out there about getting this economy up and going again. In the last minute we have, there was also this effort led by Democrat Tim Kaine and others uh, to try and curtail the president's war powers. He vetoed that. Uh, now there may be a vote uh, to try and override that. W what's the status of all that? Well, that, that came out of when the president took out Soleimani in Iran uh, a few months ago. The Democrats and, and some Republicans in the Senate filed a, a resolution that would prevent the president from using his commander-in-chief powers to intervene when there's an imminent threat. And uh, that passed initially in the Senate. The president vetoed it, vetoed it. We will have an override vote in the Senate today. We will sustain the president's veto because it's important for the president to be able, when there are imminent threats, and obviously Iran is the, the world's largest state mm -hmm. sponsor of terror, uh, to be able to intervene if necessary. And, and we think that's a power under the commander in chief in his article two of the constitution that he needs to be able to maintain. By the way, I heard you were teaching a civics class of some kind of politics <laughs> on Facebook. How'd that all go? You're teaching the next generation or what? Yeah, well, we're doing what we can to help out, Ed. You know, these guys are, they're studying at home. They're a little bit bored. We're just trying to, you know, hopefully splice it up a little bit. All right, Senator, leader and teacher now as well. Senator John Thune, appreciate you coming on. Thanks, Ed, good all to right. be with you. Senator. Thanks.